Watch that as far as my little eye. Andor, Cassian Andor, talking about Andor, Cassian Andor. He's a rebel spy, super best friend. Give you a hug at the very end. Make ten men feel like a hundred. He's the rogue one for me. He's Cassian Andor. Hi, I'm Jason from the Turd Avengers Tower. You're watching Turd Theory. Why is he called and and or like and or what is what I'm trying to figure out. Like I, I, I had it figured out though, Jason. And like, didn't, Faka, I don't get it. You didn't run them lyrics by me. I would have been like Cassie and Andor shoot you in the back or love you till death. And boom, that's when they all hey, die, right? You know what? <laughs> You know Come what? on, this is a good lyric. This bitch, this, this bitch ain't got a second verse yet. <laughs> Been listening to Mel Star and DJ Jazzy Jeff all morning, so I'm, I'm ready to. Spit You're ready. Some, well, some, hey, if you want, if you want to rap <laughs> the second verse, by all means. <laughs> I mean, you see you know, this face? I mean, <laughs> I mean, we are going back to like 1990 because we do got like Jaleel White in Star Wars now. I yeah. mean, Urkel's in Star Wars. I mean, why not DJ Jazzy Jeff or your approximation of them is what I say. Yeah. But uh, yeah, do what do what Azatru says. We're just going to play Battlefront all over your face and uh, uh, like hit the like button. Don't 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 smash it because I don't own it. I don't own you. I don't own anything on YouTube. But I don't want to pay for it. Uh, and Planet Fitness is here. Um, got pizza. Maybe he's got pizza. They got pen, they got pizza. That Planet was Fitness. yesterday. Because yesterday's oh. two, it's it's uh, that that uh, special at Papa Murphy's, right? Twelve dollars for a large. That's how they get all their. Gotcha. You think they go with decent pizza at the, or do you think it's like Tombstone pizzas at the Planet Fitness, Jason? Hmm. No, you know? no, it's 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 a uh, Little Caesars thin Little crust Caesar's. cheese. Um, <laughs> uh oh, today's the day when Mrs. Claus gives it up because it's hump day. Happy hump day, says Santa. Stocking suffer. I can't do it. <laughs> oh, they call, yeah, they call me the stocking suffer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, I just, it's it's not, I don't know, Brian's his name. I, it's, I just love. Yeah, the Santa gimmick. You got to understand how much I love the Santa gimmick. Like ever since I saw I saw Christmas Story and the Santa Claus the movie in the same year and there was two radically different Santas in there, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like my mind was like there's so many different Santas. That's how I knew yeah. there was no Santa. But then the possibility of the multiverse of Santas just blew my mind. So anytime there was like a uh, in the comic books there'd be like a Rob Liefeld drew like a battle Santa once, and then they did Evil Ernie Santa and Spawn. Santa. I'm like, I just love all the Santas. I <laughs> love them all. I love it. I love them all. <laughs> I love all the innuendos. I love it. Dudley Moore Santa. Why not? Oh, and hey, Baymax. Speaking of friends, did you see the one where, where, uh, where Monica wanted no. to get Demi Moore's haircut, and they gave mm -hmm. her Dudley Moore's haircut? No. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, that was good. Did she keep it? No. Pussy. No. All right. Anyway, this is a guy with no hair, but okay. Hey, hey, well, what? That's that's God hates me. What do you want me to do about it? <laughs> Cassie and Andor stab you in the back, or, or shoot you in the back, or friend till death. Right. Right. Come right. Come. I mean, technically, it's like I am still your friend. Pew pew. All right, Rick <laughs> Femi, you. Uh, this is from this. This is from Bespin Bulletin. Um, I'm not going to lie to you guys right now. Bestman Bulletin has very sweaty balls. Like, as this was written by a man with very hot balls. Because uh, he's he's in 
in a place called England. And in England, it's it's hot, is what I saw on the news. Um, they won't drive they won't drive their trains because they can't go to work because uh, everybody's got hot balls. So uh, it's not global warming; it's just a tradition. It's uh, it's a, you, a, a British tradition called Hot Ball Day. You yeah. remember on Coast to Coast AM, um, they'd have this guy on who'd come on and do uh, not by fire, but by ice. We're really all gonna go with that. <laughs> no, no, no. And was, yeah, and I'm like, every year I'm like, yeah, I bet that fucker's dead now. We all have to live with his stupid fucking propaganda he put out for like 20 years, you know. Not by fire, but by ice. It was the book. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. I know. Oh man. Know. Yeah. Yep. As and glaciers it's... were melting every year on record. You know what I mean? Like it's like, all right, man. Um, Baymax also has very hot balls today. Um, pretty much everybody's got uh, hot balls, hot tits. Not 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 in a good way. Like in the like the sweaty way. Sweaty sweaty balls, sweaty tits. It's a whole nation. Sweaty balls, sweet. Whole continent, sweaty balls, sweaty, sweaty tits. As the truth says, it hasn't been uh, too hot today, but yesterday was awful. Wish I was back in LA. It was my birthday too, and every place to dine in at or order was 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 shut. Whoa, that's weird though. At least you got like one of those really weird birthdays, you know? Like I just love like, how he was like, "It's so hot. I wish I was in LA right now." <laughs> yeah, that's fucking weird. <laughs> the end of the world sucks. <laughs> like you need to understand, folks. Probably the most accurate depiction of L.A. ever put to screen is the first three seconds of Terminator 2. Yeah. Where it's just sweltering and everyone's stuck in traffic. Predator 2. And then, yeah, but I'm now that whole bit and then nuclear, <laughs> like that's <laughs> that's L.A. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I remember, remember Predator 2 came out and it was like super hot like that at that time. And I was like, this is, I hated the movie because it just felt even more like insufferable. I agree out. that if you're going to do a sweltering heat wave, L.A. is a pretty good place. But I sort of feel like that was just the screenwriters who were like, you know, they didn't have AC that summer. Like, fuck, let's, you know what? Fucking Predator. It's hot. It's hot here. Oh, Fucking here L.A. Like sucks. There? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I just, <laughs> yeah. Do, do you think Do you think Mike Porter logged into the show today, whatever you want to call it, clicked on the show, and then was like, oh, and or... Oh man, that was a Mike Porter dad joke waiting to happen. And well, you know what, Mike Porter? You could have it. Uh, Planet Fitness says if you have sweaty balls, you could come in down to our gym. Everyone is accepted here. There you go. Planet That's why Fitness. It's crawling with Proud Boys. Is it really? I don't know. All I know is my buddy <laughs> still goes to gyms, you know, like he uh -huh. still does that. Yeah. And, um, he has to deal with it's in arizona so guys walking in there with fucking three percenter shirts and all that fucking black and yellow like they all think they're batman right so they're like batman's black and yellow i'll make black and yellow shirts and skulls oh. and blah 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 blah, blah. And, yeah. yeah it's like that dude there's always some cat in california who likes to drive around with an abortion van it's like a van covered in like dead fetuses photos of dead fetuses it's like that it's like that we You've call it, it the uh, we call it the Nirvana van. Um, You've seen it. Everyone's yeah. seen that van in California. <laughs> There's like um, when, when I when I'm going to this to this uh, Mexican restaurant I like to eat at um, mm -hmm. near me. Now every single time I go there, there's a big big van for um, back pages. Which is, I guess, like a oh, I thought they like got a sex down. worker thing. Yeah, that's what I, I only know of it from from true crime documentaries <laughs> I watch on on YouTube. Uh, I swear, and uh, but on it, it's like back pages are back, and it's like a van that's just like trying to kind of like <laughs> it's really weird. I'll I'll take a picture of it. It's like it's there. A, it's a government's day. thing, you know that. Yeah, you, it's know, a, you know, it's Gavin Newsom's oh. like literally in there waiting for you to come. You, know? <laughs> you, you like jump in, you like walk into the van, and they just cuff you. They just cuff you. They're oh, ready. Yeah. All right. By the way, I support sex workers. They're, they're legal in every oh, country sure. but ours. So it's fucking yeah. Saudi Arabia. It's ridiculous. Yeah. By, by, by all means, earn that money, I say. And, uh, you know, I, I, know, I know a few guys that could save themselves some unnecessary children <coughs> if they just had access to legal prostitution. So. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Those kids aren't, they're not having a good time right now, Jason. That's all I can say. Well, let's Sadly. go, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's make a bunch more of those so we could have a, a higher crime rate. That sounds fun. Rick Famuyua directed at least two episodes of The Mandalorian season three. 
And then right here, we got right here. We got John Favreau uh, doing the classic fat guy move of the black um, hoodie. But that you zip up, hoping it's going to make oh, you no, not no. look as fat it's as a you are. Boy hoodie, isn't it? No, isn't no, it? Oh, no, no. That's a fat guy move. Trust me, I do this one too. We all do He's this like, one. He's like, it's a poor boy. He's, you used to know, fat, those fucking little sandwiches. And then, <laughs> and then, the, and then right here, you got Filoni, and he's like, mmm, <clears throat> what am I looking at off camera? I don't, I don't even, what are we looking <laughs> he's at? He's staring at the bag of in and out at craft service. He's like, <laughs> he's like, I don't know. I just pretend. <laughs> I don't know what. And then, and you got like, like, like Rick Femiyu, who's just like, man, I'm glad these guys just think I'm cool so I get to direct all these episodes. He's a great director. I'm not really shit talking that. But uh, yeah, I am happy that, that he's back, though. He he's he's he does he's done good work. I hope he gets a movie one of these days. I think he's uh he, he could he's do like it. so they tried to talk me into doing Kenobi. No fucking way. Like, <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm, no. All right. So Never back wins. at Star Wars Celebration in May, creator of the Mandalorian, Juan Favreau, uh, announced that Rick Famuyiwa had now taken an executive producing role on the third season of the Mandalorian. Oh shit, as, son as well as coming back to direct an unspecified number of episodes. However, we now know, thanks to Grief Karka himself, Carl Weathers, it's a good stew, that Femi Yua directed at least two episodes of the upcoming third season. During an interview with Big Gold Belt Media, Weathers said, you got Rick Femi Yua, who's here, who's behind the camera, executive producing on our show, you know? Who directed me in a couple of episodes on the Mandalorian this season, and I'm a huge fan. So, given the comments by Weathers, Famuyiwa is directing at least two episodes this season. It may be more, but if we take Weathers' couple at its literal meaning, then it's at least two. Rick Famuyiwa directed two episodes of the Mandalorian season one, chapter two, The Child, and chapter six, The Prisoner. Famuyiwa returned to direct a single episode of season. Two, chapter 15, The Believer, which garnered much praise due to Bill Burr's performance as Mayfeld. Femi, you was, uh, uh, the season one episode, The Prisoner, was that the one with the Jawa? The Jawa? Mm, uh, I, I, I'm Sandcrawler? not sure. The Sand yes, Crawler? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. With the, when he fights the mud. He, he directed mud that with, one. He directed yeah, that, that one. I, that, I, I don't remember the titles that well. That That's my favorite episode of that season, man. Like, yeah. that is so... And that Bill... That Bill Burr episode is the Bill Burr I mean, one. So the best one. So yeah. So he's really genius. The best one. Yeah, yeah, or, or the high, the highest quality one, I would say. Maybe tension. It's not the he, best, and, and and you can see the tension that he helped create in that room when Burr and and uh, Andor Andor <laughs> got Andor. me. You got me, white guy. So <laughs> my bias, Jason. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Anyways, we're uh, Mando and Burr are going there. Yeah, man, that's so good, dude. He's so good. I, I heard uh, Bill Burr's new special is good, too, by the way. Uh, Femi Yua isn't the only director returning this season, as Carl Weathers himself is returning to direct an unspecified number of episodes after directing Chapter 12, The Siege, for Season 2. The Can't only that. The only other returning director we know of is Bryce Dallas Howard, who we broke was returning back in January. No, you're supposed to write who I exclusively reported or something like that. I'll tell you you're supposed to do it. Um, best been bulletin. <laughs> <laughs> Howard uh, directed chapter four, the sanctuary for season one, then returned to direct chapter 11. God, I feel like I'm talking about bankruptcy or something. Uh, the Harris for season two, which received an incredible, incredibly positive reaction from fans. Howard directed what some would argue is the best episode of the Book of Boba Fett, Chapter 5, The Return of the Mandalorian. It's unknown how many episodes Howard is directing in Season 3, but she was directing episode an episode six. in January this year, and we later saw her directing The Mandalorian in March. Yeah, my question about that is, did, did she direct two, or did she come back for the reshoots to run the reshoots, or just to redo reshoots on her episode? I um, didn't reshoot enough, Jason. That's all I can say. It is, uh, what, for three? We don't even know yet. No, I was um, talking about for Book of Boba Fett. Oh, yeah. No, for, for this is for, we're talking about for Man Mando 3. Oh, okay. It's unknown That's if creator John Favreau will direct an episode this season. And he's only directed one episode in the past. 
Executive producer Dave Filoni has directed at least one episode of The Mandalorian and directed an episode, excuse me, of The Book of Boba Fett. But it is unknown if he's returned to direct an episode of The Mandalorian at as at the time, he was busy writing and working on pre-production for Ahsoka. The last question mark on returning directors is Peyton Reed, who directed Chapter 10, The Passenger, and the Season 2 finale, Chapter 16, The Rescue. Uh, at Star Wars Cele- on that episode, by the way. I get Luke shows up. It's all fun. But there's a lot of corny shit on that fucking episode. I yeah. yeah. You know, it's... Yeah. At Star Celebration, Favreau hinted at uh, a return for Reed. Um, in all of the aforementioned directors and returning and to end direct at least one episode, um, barring Famuyiwa, who's directing at least two, then that brings the episode count to seven, meaning there's one episode unaccounted for. Either one of the returning directors has an additional episode or they're bringing somebody new into the fold, which I would personally like to see. And that's where I'm here to announce that last year, I directed an episode of The Mandalorian. You or, or, or him? I did. It was me. You, you did. I did it. <clears throat> it was me. It was all my idea. That's the whole thing was my idea. The whole the whole show. The whole show. I wrote a prequel to it. I wrote a prequel to The Mandalorian and uh, directed it. And then said everything that follows is my idea too. So, you also wrote lyrics. You were like, Mando. Yeah. Mando. Well, it was like, it was it. like. What? Mando, it's this new recipe for pizza. It's called Mando. Everybody loves it and wants a slice. Then the Empire comes and blows up the planet because planet they want to control right. the pizza flow. Yeah, and then P- Planet Fitness comes and shows up. A planet full of buff guys, and and they they save the little Mandalorian and they put him and his family on a different planet. <laughs> planet and then, Fitness pizza in my face. <laughs> and then and then and then the, the all of the they're they're called the Hanks. They're all a bunch of buff guys. They're buff troopers. They call up the Mandalorians and they're like, yeah, hey, like Death Watch, there's a family down here. His name is Din Djarin. I think he would be great uh, for your cult. And they're all, oh, thanks, Hank. He's like, no problem, dude. And then that's what you see in season one when they save little, little Din. So, yeah, they so start it, the cult, the proud Hanks. It's all my idea now. And it's it's all mostly Chet Hanks. But, yeah. <laughs> Robert Sinclair says, the footage you guys were watching the other day, Carl Weathers' character looked a bit r- rotund. Any chance he's become <laughs> that corrupted in his new position? Not as easy to stay pure when you're in power. I don't know. I, I, I think I think he's going to be good because they like do like the, the the predator handshake and stuff, you know. And uh, so I think they're going to keep him like. But I I do think that it's just not a very flattering, rich guy robe, you know. Yeah. He was obviously a bounty guild guy prior to Mando show events. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, that's that's where that's why he's on both of those worlds we see him on and stuff in the first season. So in this, I think in this season, he may have like become like the mayor of the town or something, you know. And he's doing a good job. I, I don't know if that's what happens, obviously, but it's something like that because we did see the last time we saw it, Cara Dune was becoming a sheriff, which implies that it that there was civility coming to that lawless land if you will so her and herschel walker went to the fbi training academy right? but, <laughs> oh, I, what? oh that's what i was <laughs> going to say yesterday uh what if we, we brought back Cara Dune and we got ricky schroeder and we had them team up? <laughs> it's a step down bro it's called star wars for them no okay <laughs> i thought star wars was, was for everyone I guess, I guess, I guess it's not. You're using the wrong pronoun for them. <laughs> oh, no. These people don't like that them word, you know? Star Wars is for female and male. <laughs> yeah. So, but, yeah. In terms of, like, the, uh, like, like the direct doors, I do think when it does seem like, for the most part, have we seen anybody come back to direct more and it get worse? I don't really think that's been been the uh, case. Does Robert Rodriguez count? No. <laughs> yeah, because no. he he directed Mando, I... that Boba Fett episode. <laughs> then he came back, and it was worse. Um, here's the thing. Uh, <laughs> as as a director of The Mandalorian, I could tell you, uh, he really wasn't there. <laughs> he was at Planet Fitness mostly playing guitar. 
with puppets. So he was serenading all the Muppets, dude, the whole time. <laughs> Miss Piggy had to file a harassment. Oh no, Miss Piggy. It's a whole problem. Believe pigs. That's what I say. <laughs> don't, don't. It, you, that has a whole nother connotation. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, but that that's pretty much our uh our uh, Star Wars news of the day, you know. Hey, it's Lucky Momo. Got to do the Predator handshake or else Disney might lose the license in that lawsuit. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, they'll win. Or if they lose, they'll just buy, buy whoever bought it and keep owning everything. KG says, don't let Roddy Rod back unless it's for guitar lessons. <laughs> See yeah. how quickly... People, fans turn on you, Jason. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, they love that Boba Fett episode on the Mando, but then he went and fucked it all up. Oh, yeah. Like, well, just if like if that, you fuck man. it up, they will turn on you. That, that just like, that quickly, just, dude. Like, just like quickly. Was it quick, know? though? I feel like we got about four episodes worth of. I, you know? No, I turned on him like halfway through the first one. I was like, I'm out. <laughs> You're like, I know. <laughs> I'm no better, Jason. I'm not, you yeah. know, don't think I'm like. You know, I, I'm not throwing stones in a glass, something, whatever the fuck, in a Wonka Vader, or the fucking thing is. You know, <laughs> like, wait, you're talking about Fozzie Bear? You're talking about Fozzie Bear? Ah, uh, Waka, Waka right? Waka, ah, Waka, ah, Waka, Waka, Waka Elevator? The Waka oh. Vader, yeah. Waka Waka. Waka so, I I completely abandoned that shit. Yeah. I was like, you know, I don't even want him near. I, I don't want him near anything. I you know. I kept thinking it was back heavy. Like he brought all this action stuff for like the finale or something, you know. And in a weird yeah. way, I think that might be what kind of happened because they like they were talking about how it was amazing that that finale even happened and stuff. Okay, guys, it's got a big confirmation right now. Big Star Wars confirmation coming in. Bespin Bulletin confirms he does have sweaty balls. I sound like you're about to take a shit when you say I got a big oh. <sighs> sweaty balls. You were like, what are we watching? Yeah, it's slow news day. Slow, slow, slow news day. Uh, yeah, and then um, there was another thing, by the way, um, that happened. It was like the Star Wars.com Twitter account or whatever, like confirmed that Andor would premiere with two episodes. And it kind of people were acting like it was kind of a big thing because I think most people missed it was a celebration announcement. So if you did miss it, that is happening. That will be a thing. So. Star Wars Genesis have to say, well, Morgan was raising awareness of Roddy Rod before the book of Boba Fett, reminding that Roddy Rod was the spy kids, dude. Roddy Rob. Yeah, nah. but he also fucking put together, look, the first Sin City is well directed, and, and Battle Angel was his most recent thing. So if I was to sit there and go, well, you know, maybe he learned to give a shit working with Cameron again, right? You know, because Cameron mm-hmm. don't fuck around. So it's like, then it's like, yeah, maybe he did, but then he was right back to the old annex, you know? Yeah. Well, it, I mean, it, it could also be that. I mean, it, it could just, at the end of the day, could, obviously he was the, the director, so at the end of the day, it kind of goes to him. But it just might be that it, when you get down to it, the Favreau, the Favreau Luke Filoni, you know, mix just isn't good for him. Just doesn't. Just like how they, you know, because that that Boba Fett episode, aside from the you know the cinematography, which is literally just outside, um, which yeah. is fine down the street, which, you know, you know how I feel about that, and yeah. then um, was good, dude. It was a good episode, you know. Like I mean, the fighting was dope, the action. I saw. I'm like, I, I just don't know. Well, yeah, and that was what I was hoping for was that we were going to get more of that really high kinetic action kind of stuff but not from him um planet fitness says san diego comic con will have some news on ahsoka ashley Eckstein will be attending it At, well two things about that <laughs> you, 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 you beef cake you beef cake you hunk beef cake uh ashley Eckstein's not in the ahsoka series so th- right. she won't be saying anything about it and they haven't done anything at san diego comic con that of importance since 2015 and the only thing that's happened since 2015 have been these exclusive figures and they're doing the andor one this year that time they were on kevin smith's panel right yeah that was, was fun it was you worth and it. everyone left i was like <laughs> bye um 
so it, where I'm going with this is, yeah, I don't, I would not hold my breath on there being anything at Comic Con. Disney seems to have pulled out for their own uh, events, basically. Yeah, Disney always pulls out. <laughs> That's a paycheck move. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then Planet Fitness says maybe she talks about a flashback role in Ahsoka with Anakin. Well, think about how weird that would be. We would flash back to her getting older, a different actor who's older, I think, than isn't it's isn't Ashley Eckstein. Ashley, she's never going to be live action Ahsoka. No, Just no, totally go. not. Yeah, it, no, no, it's not. But but imagine if that happened. All of a sudden, she's like a, a completely like different person, but who's like not younger at all. So, anyways, I, I don't know. They're probably about the same age. I, I'm not. I don't really follow people's. I don't know how old they are, but. That said, the uh, the city. yeah, <laughs> it's just, look, she did a voice, man. You know, she did a voice, that's she, all it is. She did a good job, she, she did a good yeah. job with the voice. So, that's it, that's all it is. Yeah, it's a voice. Maybe, maybe they'll shoot the flashback from uh, first person and then she'll be the voice and she'll be like, Hey, Sky Guy, where's our Tui? <laughs> oh no, um, Will Morgan says, Alas, I'll. I have our unsolicited, unheeded warnings. <laughs> Aria says, when does the Andor trailer come out? I haven't heard anything concrete about when the Andor trailer will hit. And like I will this. be honest with you. Sounds like Spreezy. I got to be honest with you. I don't think I could say if I knew. Because that might reveal the source of the last Kenobi trailer stuff from us. So, it, which it's you probably, all got wrong, I got right. No, I'm talking about the one where, where we said the trailer was coming out and what it would kind of some of the stuff oh, that would be okay. in it. Right. So, you gotta, you gotta, you know, sources are like your dogs. You gotta let your dogs rest. They get a little tired and then they get cut off and they get diabetes. They kind of get cut off. Your dog got diabetes from running too much. Your, 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 dogs, your dogs, your dogs, your dogs, your kicks, your feet. I don't know why the fuck you're your Herschel Walkers. <laughs> I walk you around. Oh, okay, I get it now. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So don't expect any. So just don't even watch the show anymore, everybody. Don't expect anything from me this time. Um, yeah, because he doesn't care. <laughs> I'm done. I mean, yeah. on, on one hand, what am I gonna do, girl? Like. like Oh, here it is. And then some guy could go like could go and put it on YouTube and then blame me for a shitty analysis. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's sorry about that. Jason. Already trying to, to uh, do that with the uh, Mandalorian stuff now too. trying to trying to make a make it into a thing that um, that uh, what's her name? The uh, well, God, I could never remember her fucking Bo-Katan. They're trying to make it a thing that like Bo-Katan is going to be Mandalore. And oh, God, I want Din to be it. What is this bullshit? Oh, SJWs. they're doing that now? Trying. They're trying. Same dudes? Different dudes? Same dudes, different day. Uh, KG says, I'm getting fatter without my membership over here at Planet Fitness. <laughs> 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 I just love that idea that we're all slowly getting fatter on the show together. Oh, yeah. Like right <laughs> now. Like, I like it. Let's all... We should have a pizza day, Jason. Pizza party we... day? Yeah, let's have a pizza party. You know, let's, well, let's pick a, pizza a day. Party. Let's do Friday. How about Friday? We do a pizza party. Pizza uh, party Friday. I can yeah. probably do pizza party Friday. Let's do, I mean, let's do it. Yeah, pizza party on Friday. I'll get a Papa Murphy's because I'm not. It's literally across the street from me. There's no sense in trying anything else. Oh, I spelled that, but uh, <laughs> it's not good. It went right on my synthetic. But uh, <laughs> mm. I get so excited about pizza, Jason. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do. Now I'm gonna be thinking about it all fucking week. But you, you can't turn on the show down the road when you get fat and be like, oh, the show's making me fat. I got to quit. Because <laughs> that's your idea, man. You set up the pizza party. Actually, um, it's just because I have pizza every Friday, so I know I can take <laughs> the calories. Like. <laughs> right. But we should do it here. We should have the... Um, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll, eat pizza. I'll eat pizza and Ducky Memo's face. I don't care. Yeah. You know? We'll do a, we'll do a turd theory day and we'll have a pizza party. We'll just... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, I, I want to like be like... Oh, yeah, I'm going to be like, let's get right into it. That's what they say on YouTube. <laughs> let's get right into it. Is that what they do? Let's get right into it? Let's like... get right into it. People are like, fuck yeah! I'm watching the whole video to the end. I don't know why like that is supposed to work or it does. It's 
Whenever I, I, I like, like it when they go, let us know what you think in the comments below, and then I go and write what I think, and people fucking hate me. Like, I'm yeah, like, you don't really want to know what well, I think. I like, got shit takes. <laughs> I mean, not talking, you know. I mean, that, except I for do. Rob. There's a little, little asterisk that says except for Rob. Whenever anybody says that, just so you know. No. Yeah, everyone leave your comments, but Rob, fucking loser. I I will say Will Morgan. Uh, YTD is a good director, though. The only thing here's the thing about him that I I will say. I'm not I'm not so sure he should be in the writing process on everything. Like when it comes to things like Thor and Star Wars, I almost wonder if he should be taking something and then giving this body of work that exists already personality. The Russos you know? didn't write Endgame and Civil War and you know what I mean? Like Marcus mm -hmm. and McFeely like wrote those. So. I'm, I'm very was, weary Thor? of the auteur. No, I haven't. It's a, we have a 15% transmission rate here for COVID, so I'm not going anywhere. But I'll say this about having not seen it. Let me give you my, my yeah. take, right? Okay. Um, all these people out there are like, it's not going to make as much money. This whole fucking phase four has been a waste of time. Meanwhile, Doctor Strange 2 made $955 million, dude. Like, like if, if I'm not saying that's a sign of success. What I'm saying is, no, I'm saying stop seeing them if you're fucking unhappy. <laughs> stop watching the shows. Stop yeah. giving them money, because and sometimes it takes ten plus years. Because I stopped giving Lucas my money, you know, and it took well, ten years while, to get a new trailer. While we're trying to be better, I want to apologize. Um, I'm the thirteen percent Snyder bots. That's me. <laughs> All thirteen percent of the Snyder bots were were, were, were me. I don't. I, I I watched that story. I I don't understand it. Did you watch? Did you read it? Yeah, yeah. I don't get well, the like. I guess what I hate is that he der the the thirteen percent thing. I don't give a shit. I guess the the no, but, gist of the story. Go ahead. But if it's thirteen percent, that's still like you know eighty seven percent or whatever. That's legit, like real. Right? Yeah. yeah. So but so the what? point of the story wasn't that. That's what all the leads okay. were. Right. Oh, okay. Like. The point of the story was to say that he basically threatened the the two producers, Jeff Johns and whoever else, Bergman or what I don't fucking the two guys that he would sick. You got two first names, audience. Jeff Johns. You got he two fucking first names, and I will destroy you. He would sick the internet bots on him, basically. You know, mm. if they didn't fucking do it, he's like, I'll ruin you online, and it's like, and that wasn't that true because I I wasn't gonna do it. I would, if he said to do it, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> Santa was like, I'm deploying the hates. <laughs> <laughs> it's the other. No, thing. no. Meanwhile, which, Santa, Santa has the fucking cowl on and he's like, but they were elves. To which I go, man, we grew up in the literal fucking East versus West Coast rappers. People legitimately were shot and murdered. I'm not fucking going to sit here and worry about and Nirvana like, a, a versus couple of white guys getting harassed shot themselves. On Sorry, a couple white guys, white wealthy dudes getting harassed on the internet. Call me uber progressive, whatever you want. Don't like, what, what, just turn the internet off. What? Uh, no offense, like I'm here at making Jeff Star Wars. We have a 100% um, bullying against no <laughs> bullying policy, Rob. I'm about to put you in time No, no bully. Just accept the consequences of your bullying. <laughs> like that's that's yeah. all I'm saying. One day you too will get your own netflix series uh, cobra kai seasons one through 21 there's gonna be 20 of these you yeah. could be a bully and still be successful right jason so like <laughs> i just like what so one white guy threatened some a couple other white guys. the whole point of that fucking snyder cut was that you know some Why dudes came on and were like it? yeah ray fisher got the shit end of the stick gal gadot got fucking sexually harassed like real fucking shit happened that's mm. your fucking take you know like like fucking let Snyder make his Ayn Rand movies and who gives a shit? You know what I mean? Like I could give fucking two shits less, dude. Like I don't know, man. Like I just don't. I'm not the biggest fan of his films. I didn't like Batman v Superman at all, except the opening. The opening's fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. But like Sucker Punch, I was like, all right, it's visually stunning. I just I had the fucking I can't stand this fucking story. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. But I could say that about mostly every Star Wars film, right? Like, like shut, <laughs> you shut your mouth. <laughs> shut it. Well, we can agree episode nine, right, Jason? Yeah, sure. Right? Zack yeah. Snyder's episode nine might as well. <laughs> remember when apart. Palpatine was just falling apart? Like that yeah. guy from Robocop? Oh, they remember the uh, one they drove through? I wanted to. Falling apart. So much at the end. I was waiting in the theater 
for at the very end for Finn to just drive a land speeder in and like just plow through Palpatine like the dude from Robocop. I'm like, if they do that, all is forgiven. Like, you broke <laughs> my <laughs> Smith hit. <laughs> all, or he he runs a horse through him, right? <laughs> <laughs> <It's just laughs> Palpa everywhere, dude. <laughs> you know, puddle teen, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> yeah. God, that uh, would be amazing. Ducky says, 2015, is that a seven year itch? Maybe they'll scratch it and deliver some goods. I don't think so because, like, D23 and investors' meetings and Star Wars celebrations, I just, I think that, like, they will do the Comic Con exclusive merch because it's it's a large audience to sell you know an andor toy and selling the andor toy gets the buzz out so i think that's where their head is personally i i I would be great if i was wrong it would be cool if they did do something if they did try to push andor um at comic con i would be all about it i don't think they will push ahsoka whatsoever though um just to like go back to that a little bit it's too early always going to push what's next yeah. Like yeah, it's always what's next, not what's coming after what's next, because if they push, if they, they push the circuit too much, then Andor comes out and you're like, oh, well, I was, you know, focused on, on, on Ahsoka coming out. So they want you thinking about one thing at a time. So kind of, but so far, um, over Ahsoka has had sort also, of a better can, push for whatever can we reason. Stop with the whole fucking good trailer a trailer means anything for a quality of a film anymore because mm-hmm. like this this year alone dude every guy was like the Thor trailer's got 75 million views oh and now everyone's like it's gonna fail it sucks the movie's horrible like whatever happened to the Thor being the greatest fucking mm-hmm. <laughs> so I don't know man like I wish there was some consistency to art bullshit arguments I, I, I what I yeah. do appreciate about red letter media is that when they're when they get something wrong or or when they they make they tell they tell the internet to get J.J. Abrams on Star Wars, and then when it doesn't go the way they want, they go, "Oh my bad," you know. Mm-hmm. Like they at least own up. Sure. I just want more ownership. Like if I fucking got the Obi Wan trailer drop wrong, every day I'd be up here going, "Man, I don't know shit," you know. Yeah, you don't. I don't. Wait, <laughs> damn! I turned that one against me, didn't I? <laughs> My wife could learn a few lessons from you, Jason. She's no, not as good at it as you are. <laughs> you know what? We'll team up. We'll te- bring her to the pizza party. Um, 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 Star Wars was, pizza party. What I was going to say was, uh, yeah, but we're not getting you pizza, by the way. You guys got to get your own pizza on Friday and bring it to the pizza party. Uh, you can get one of those 99 cent ones, those little the ones that you just put in the toaster oven. Get that if you want. Don't. You can do that if you want, though. You can do that. Tostinos? Pizza bread? You want to bring her pizza bread? I don't care. You can do that. Do not eat pizza rolls. George Norway almost like gave himself third degree burns down his throat at one time. <laughs> <laughs> um, On air, it was hilarious. <laughs> so, so like like I, I think that the Marvel thing though for me is a good place to have the, the like the like white GD discussion because I don't have a dog in that fight. What I keep seeing with Thor, and I, I saw Thor Ragnarok, and I like it's like my second favorite. It might be my first favorite. But it depends. If I go between Winter Soldier and that one is the ones I like the, the best in terms of the films. And so I kind of like I kind of polarized there. I kind of like the different ends of the spectrum. I don't really like a lot in the middle a lot. So I keep seeing people that went and saw a Waititi Thor movie and then were acting like it was supposed to be something completely different than what it was. Like that's that's what I keep seeing. And I think what when I, what, why? it was makes a, a Star Wars in the trailer. I don't understand. Yeah, it. and when I website is when type, when when YTD makes a Star Wars movie, you need to be like Rick Jones and say, "I want YTD. I want a funny Star War." So if you want a funny Star War, then that's going to be one that you're going to enjoy. But if you won't enjoy a funny Star War, then don't see the YTD one because that's what it's going to be, right? If I, I mean, had to guess, dude, like from a producer standpoint, like a, like the Feige and all them, who there's an actual producer on that film. It's not Kevin Feige. But um, I would say if they're looking at their slate of films and you go, okay, we got this serious sci-fi Eternals thing. We just had sort of a a, a family-based adventure with Black Widow and Shang-Chi, two family films. Then mm-hmm. you got Doctor Strange 2. You're like, we're doing this horror kind of thing, a little bit of a horror element with Raimi, you know? I mean, it's literally got an undead fucking Doctor Strange running around and shit, you know? Mm-hmm. And, like, little kids were crying at the theater. It was great. Um, oh, so grow like, up! And we did the Spider-Man thing, which is super dramatic. That's a super drama. So, like, 
why don't we do something more fun? You know, like that's all they're doing. Yeah. Otherwise, you end up in, the, I guess people just quickly forget what it was like during that whole like Thor 2 era, right? Iron Man 3, Thor 2, where everything was like super serious, every fucking movie, but it wasn't like Marvel. It was, it was Marvel serious. It was super serious, but not really. It was just, they all tend to have like this generic kind low of low like stakes kind G, of thing. G.I. Joe kind of like tone yeah. where it's like, you know, it's serious, but like ninja serious. Like, no, no, no like, that's, that's exactly what didn't work for me. I felt like nothing mattered in a way that was just my general vibe vibe of it and that's but where i'm where we're going with this is uh yeah on that one i don't think I do. it was i don't think it's the wisest plan to take a big break from star wars and then and then to come back with the with the white td star wars i don't think that was that was the plan obviously it was supposed to be rogue squadron which i don't right. really have a lot of faith in which, either how, how do you think they're kicking themselves now that fucking Top Gun made one point two billion dollars, and they're like, "We were supposed to have the Top Gun movie with the X wings." Like, like I, 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 they I don't even did a so. trench run. Jason. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think so because I don't think, I don't think the Rogue Squadron movie has all of the stuff that Top Gun had going for it. Like Chris being McCoy. like a military industrial complex propaganda film doesn't have that. Uh, it doesn't can, have. I doesn't mean, have, we, we got Boston can. Dynamics and Bobo. Like, true. Like, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't have. No, but I, I mean, it doesn't have like like it, you know the the same kind of nostalgia, the 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 holding back. I, I just don't think it has any of the Tom Cruise element. It just there's, there's so many like you, check boxes he's good. Now. He is, he is no, good he, as Maverick, yeah. it's pretty much the only thing you know. And as a producer, he's good though. Like he gets sure. audiences. Like I guess. I don't know, man. Did you say Tom Cruise? People, people, people bring up Scientology as if every other religion has fucking a legitimate claim to sanity. But like, like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm just like the dude makes entertaining films more than he does. not Like, and yeah. how many? I can't. I gotta say, man, I like The Rock. I don't like a lot of rock. Mo the Rock movies. I don't like any of the Rock know? movies. Right. I mean, I like. I've liked. That's. I, I like the guy. He seems cool. Like I said, I wish he was my neighbor and we had barbecues. But is is movies? Don't really like the him. last rock movie I liked and I still like I loved was um it's fuck it was called Hell Dorado originally. It's the one with fucking so, Oh the Rock with Sean Connery? N no, 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 no. <laughs> this movie was like dope, dude. Ernie Reyes Jr. is in this movie. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he fights fuck it's Sean William Scott, Ernie Reyes Jr. And it's a movie where like he meets Arnold in the very beginning and Arnold tells him good Tooth luck. Fairy. No, it was before that. It was before okay. that. Like this is a, this is way this is this is a good movie, man. I just forget the name of it because it was originally called Hell Dorado. And then they changed how about it. this one? Christopher Walken's in it as the bad we guy. Have, good. We have The Rock playing in his most daring, daring role yet. He's transitioning. The Rundown. The Scorpion Queen. The Rundown. If he had yes, any balls. The name is not good. Hell Dorado is a much better. It's so good. It's like, it's like um, Edge of Tomorrow's original name, right? All you need is die or whatever shit like that. Like, that fucking name is way better than that. Yeah, yeah. And for real, all you need instead of like love is some fucking. <laughs> it's an anime. It's a, it's a manga, man. The whole thing was a manga. Originally. Okay. But right. um, whatever. Anyway, I agree <coughs> with you, though. Directors writing their own tentpole films, I don't know anymore, man. And does because... the does the auteur theory should it does it even a fucking apply to to blockbuster movies outside of weirdo ass George Lucas? It, but Lucas you know? didn't fucking solely write Star Wars. The fucking mm. Hanks wrote everything, right? Like, <laughs> the, oh, the high the Haley's, the high X, the, the red Hoex. Hoex. eighty percent, right? Eighty percent, and and Leah Brackett and Lawrence Kasdan wrote Empire, and and in. And Kurtz wrote most of it on set, right? Like, the Hayek's also wrote Temple of Doom. Fucking love Temple of Doom, bro. Yeah, wrote Temple so. of Doom. So, no, we don't, I don't, I think tentpole films have to appeal to so many folks, man, that, like, you need someone who's, I really do think you, like, the, I like the team, the Marcus Mephili thing, like the team of cats, but I really, I think you need people that can just focus on writing. They're not thinking about directing and working with actors and making decisions and production. It's too many decisions that have to get made. Seeing Lucas in there, like in the making of even Attack of the Clones, when he has to look at fucking 15 models of Dexter Jedster. Could you imagine also trying to write a bunch of scenes while you're doing that? Like, it's too much fucking much shit to do. Yeah. Like, 
And I'm being serious. Like, I don't think mm -hmm. JJ, some people could pull. I think Ryan Johansson, Rehan, you, 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 I think he would appreciate that one. That's pretty good. I think, <laughs> I think he's the closest that anyone's ever come to it. And even then, folks would tell you it was 50 50. I think it, had he had done episode nine from, you know, scratch, right? Like, all the way through that would have been the best of them all undeniably you know yeah 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 unfortunately it's no. too much the temple films are too much man favreau didn't fucking write the first iron man film and shit you know so yeah. by the way speaking of this whole writing thing i was listening to the making better call Saul podcast right with vince gilligan and them mm -hmm. and they were talking about this episode that recently happened someone big died but with spoilers but they were talking about how he's like look Someone asked him if they have it all figured out, you know, like where they knew these characters were going to go. Was, and it, he's like, was it COVID? He, he hates doing that. He's like, I don't like knowing the ending of shit, you know, like I like working it out. He's like, I feel like knowing how something's going to end and working towards that robs you of people's input. You know, when you get good ideas, you're going to pass them up because you had this one idea you're sticking to. Yeah, because it's not working so towards your agenda at the right. end. I think what he leaves out, though, is you also have to have very excellent decision making skills right like like i don't think vince gilligan's loading up the internet going oh what do they want to see you know like ah and they're reacting to that shit, you know yeah so the idea that you have to have it figured out before you start anything is ridiculous i don't believe that i think what you do need no. though is you need a crew that understands how to make the right kinds of decisions you know yeah so. i mean with with star wars we had our first trilogy that was made up as they went we had a second trilogy where the main beats were actually all worked out the, the whole over the bullet points of, the, of all three out. films but, but but were like were like worked out right and then we had a third trilogy where it was kind of worked out but that's the difference is it wasn't like the third trilogy was free ball the whole entire time they always had it was always an and or an either or uh, moment <laughs> either or and or you know there's a thing there jason and or she's a kenobi and or she's a skywalker and or she's a palpatine like there were there, there were, were like options on the wall options on the wall and ors right. as we call them around here right and ors. and <laughs> so they so it's like what does that tell us it tells us that Nothing. there's just no right way to do anything uh good there's luck. no easy way to make a movie let alone a star a wars movie yeah so that's where like with any creative endeavor jason have you ever hired a creative like paid someone to do something creatively for you uh some mixing does that count yeah well they have you hand them stuff and they have to come back with the result that you yourself could not do yeah with mixing i've done that mixing yeah because right. i always like i tell artists all the time especially illustrators who get real like you know territorial over their art mm -hmm. you need to hire someone at least once in your life like spend some money at least a thousand dollars something that is going to make a difference and whoa hire whoa whoa buddy we're on a budget here don't, don't be fine no that's what i'm saying you got to have some stakes fivers don't count you oh, got to have some stakes whoa. you got to throw down some money and actually have someone do some shit so you can learn what it's like to fucking direct you mm -hmm. know, like to and, and to get work out of people without fucking becoming this weird taskmaster, because you quickly learn that you have to not just hire the right people, but trust that when you do hire that, this is going to be the one to see see it through. Yeah. And if you don't trust what they're doing, then you become this person right over the shoulder. Now move it 10 percent. Now, uh, you know, like like adjust the volume 5 percent and change. The, and then eventually that person quits and gets fed up with you. You so, end up with the and, Lucas Dykstra kind of kind of relationship. Well, that was different where I think he thought he was running the whole studio. I mean, how do you name the camera the, the, the guy Dykstra. paid you to make after yourself, bro? You know? I mean, maybe I think he smoked some weed and forgot. And was just like, I've, I've been smoking weed making visual effects in this camera for like a year. And then this little guy comes back. I'm pretty sure this is all my stuff now. <laughs> yeah, so I've hired people to write things. I've hired people to color things. And I've mm -hmm. deleted the work that they've turned in, you know, yeah. sometimes. Because I didn't get the result. And I learned. What did I learn from this? I learned that when I go into a project, I have to do this. I have to make this clear. I did not provide enough this. Sometimes I pick the wrong people. Sometimes I pick the right people. And they just 
it just produced something that this is incompatible with what I'm trying to do, you know? Yeah. And so that's just one of those things, man, that like, you know, you can get Deborah Chow directed some episodes of Better Call Saul that were at least one that was fucking great. She know that her work on Mando was phenomenal. I feel her work on Kenobi's 50 50. You know, it's 50 50. Not, mm. It's not great. It's not bad. It has moments of sheer brilliance and other stuff where, like, I don't know what the decision making was there. But, like, the studio has to fucking let that person make what, you know, to an extent what they agreed to make. I couldn't imagine if she was also trying to write it. You know what I mean? Like, that's so crazy, dude. Like, writing and directing, man. I don't know. Like, I get. It in, in certain in certain ways, I, I I think I mean you just never know. Like if she was writing it, it may have been better because she would have been writing within the confines of what she could direct, what what her mind's eye was seeing and stuff like that, and and how to make it all come come about. Right. But but You're I right. I I think that it like you know I, I I don't know I I don't really think I think like she directed all of all of the the main moments really really well. I wouldn't even be surprised if a lot of the moments that we have problems with, she didn't even direct like that. Like a chase scene was probably second unit. Yeah, it probably, probably. was also let's, a let's priority. take it and out of Star Wars. Was, though. Yeah. Put it into the Batman category. Matt Reeves, you know, he wrote it, but he really on script wise, he only wrote the first third of the movie. I really like Matt know? Reeves a lot too. Yeah. yeah. He just, he just run out of time. He's like, I'm never going to finish it. Brought a guy in, help him finish the last part. Yeah. One could say, you know that the tone that's established in the beginning of the movie is the strongest part of the film, right? Mm -hmm. And then the back end of the movie, you're like, this feels like a little studio. <laughs> yeah, feels like a little studio influence. Well, that that's you know? always like like that's always like a problem. Yeah, that like I have like with like music and stuff is that like I end up working with other people, and sometimes they take they give they do really good work, but it takes them fucking a year, and it's just like it's too long. Unless so they, unless you agree from the beginning that that, that you're of course, thing. of yeah. course, yeah. yeah. But it's like it's like you know, yeah. If you take if you take ten years to make that Batman movie, I think Matt Reeves could make a perfect Batman movie if he has ten years. <laughs> but being able to make a, cares. a really good Batman movie in you know four years or three years, whatever he had, then it's like well, it's a whole different story. So and and that's that's the problem that Star Wars fans have. Is that if they think every production should have its ten years if it needs it, but they all want Star Wars to come out this month? Well, you know, and uh, it, it's not really the way it's ever going to work ever again. I don't think. But it is what is frustrating about modern Lucasfilm to me right now is that there's been all this time since Episode Nine and the pandemic and stuff, and there just wasn't like stuff going. They weren't writing scripts. They weren't hiring writers just to write scripts based off of concepts to like see what they got just to have something if wonder woman doesn't pit, you know has to go into production and we can't make rogue squadron what else what else can we do like i wish there was a little bit more of that other method everything seems to be based on going down this avenue of the writer director and it's just i don't think it's the right the right way to way to go and then that way, when especially if they have to like re remove them, if they don't pan out, then then what do you like? Like Solo was one of the times where it was a different writer and a different director, and then the director didn't pan, directors didn't pan out. They removed them. But what what would you do if uh, Ryan Johnson hadn't worked out on episode eight for you internally, and then you had to remove the director while keeping the, the writing? Like it would be just it's weird. It's it's a it's a complicated kind of kind of situation, and I think that they should probably not go all one side of this they should they should continue to like do both like kenobi was one where they were going they were going that route they were but it was also what was it was it stephen daldry was he the one who was going to direct kenobi originally i don't remember no no daldry was the writer the uh anyways there's so many fucking names over the years now it's like a big blur but um point being they should definitely they they, they, sh they should definitely uh have a lot of both going on i don't see why, why they wouldn't but for whatever reason i mean do, do you do you think that, that that's happening we just don't know oh that they have a secret writer's room where they're developing things and i wouldn't even say a writer's room i just mean like like they hire uh who was the guy who used to do lost uh lindelof there was a rumor that lindelof was writing a star wars script do you think right. they might just be like hey 
Damon, baby, it's Hollywood, it's Hollywood Kennedy. And then she's like, yeah, write me a, write me a Star Wars movie. And he's like, I love Hollywood Kennedy. She's yeah. like Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, she's totally, totally Sunset. <laughs> she has, she has like blue shades on, you know? So she has yeah. those Kanye glasses with the things. Right. And uh, she wears the face mask. But, but I mean, yeah, do, do you think, do you, do you think, do you think that that's how, I mean, cause what, what do you, what do you usually get? I don't know. I, I think I remember back in the day, I had some friends who sold scripts and I think they got around 40,000 for selling like a script here and there. And that was, this was a while ago now, uh, back, back when I was in college. So I have to think like, if you get how to write a star, what do you, what do you think I get 60 grand? Maybe probably, maybe, I don't know if you, how much, how, how much do the if big you're studios Lindelof pay? coming off? Well, Watchmen Lindelof. Okay. And, and not, not Lindelof. You're not um, getting 60 grand, li dude. little, uh, little, um, Stewie Stevenson who is right out of college and wrote an episode of breaking bad, the, the next class. And they're like, that was good. You know, I don't do think, think they're doing that though. Like no. the, the way you're talking about how that works and Marvel really details why they don't do this um, in the Marvel okay. studios book, the art of Marvel studios book, because when they had to, they started making a timeline after the first Iron Man movie. Right. And they're like, when we have to have these things linked up, the idea that a screenwriter comes into, you have a meeting, what you want, something, they go off. And three to six months later, come back with their script. Here's what we think. And then you have notes on it mm -hmm. and back and forth will not work in that system. And I got to imagine, like, they tried that with some of these films, right? Right. The solos and the whatevers. And I don't think that it's worked at all. Yeah. So Marvel quickly, although they have an art department that's always developing um, five, five years out, they're always developing visually. They have a writer's department where people come in, they, they're on, they're, they, they get them for at least a year, sometimes two, right? And then they just start writing things. Like they go, oh, we got this idea, that idea, or we're on this script. So any rewrites, they all happen within a little studio that they're there always with, you know? And so then you quickly, those people get a sense of the culture that they're developing, you know, versus some rando coming in there and not knowing what to do. And then they have to fight and blah 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 so that's just not it's just not happening you know right. that way and i don't think i don't th i don't even know if you do any on spec films for major temples anymore right like can't possibly happen what so, uh L L lindelof or just in general i said in general like okay. i just don't think that's happening um too much money yeah yeah, yeah. but i mean then again how do certain people get jobs like how how do they decide to make like a Hundred fifty million dollar Morbius movie, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you get the guys who basically it feels like they wrote Triple X Four, you know, like, like, you know? like it's so weird. So when people Ty say Tyrant, crap, where, where am I, I right you, now? I don't know where I am, Tyrant. But go on, sorry. I think when you uh, people say things like Thor is crap, I think they need to go back and watch a real crappy movie. I mean, seriously, and like understand what crap is. Superman: The Quest for Peace is crap, you know. I don't know, dude. He's, he he fought like a sun a sun Superman with that long was nails. Yeah, it was great. And so and yeah, and a hair. real woman went into space. That was wonderful too. Remember that, Jason? Yeah, Mariel Hemingway, like That's into right. space. It was fucking wonderful. So you know, <laughs> I I got I think the first Seven Eleven drink I ever bought was to get a seven was to get a quest for peace cup and i was very excited for it and then i went to the theater and saw it and then i was and, and like so bored. one has to be very what do i say when they when they say they don't want i don't know like you have to be very careful for what you wish for because like i saw that movie rrr right super over the top crazy okay. and everyone's like this is what marvel should be doing and i'm like if they did that you'd fucking you, 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 seriously, if they made that literally as, uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't know, want, I don't know what it is, it's but okay. over the top, crazy fun. But like, if you made that as mm -hmm. a big temple, Batman or Marvel or Star Wars film, mm -hmm. there'd be fucking riots on the mm -hmm. internet. Like, okay. they don't, you don't, you gotta be careful when you say that because they do listen, you know? So like, I never feel like I was like, like if I'm like, Hey, what are they attempting to achieve with Boba Fett? Did they achieve it? You know, I felt like whatever they attempted to achieve in Boba Fett was done in the first two episodes. Mm -hmm. And everything after that is like, what are we here for? Like, like, what are yeah. We, what are we doing? There's nothing beyond that. Unless you're going to give me some over-the-top action. 
right? Which we didn't get. So we got a really cool looking rancor. I'll give him that, you know, like good yeah. job on that. But <laughs> and and it's it's weird because as a kid, I was a really big fan of the original Rancor monster. Like I really, really truly loved it. Like I was excited for the toy to come out and everything. And then um on the a new one, I like the moments, but I just don't really don't care. You know what like I mean? Like on tip, it was like I had designed it to be stop motion. As I said, it should have been. Mm -hmm. But old Lucas came in and was like, I want you to well, well, the they, 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 ever. <laughs> they, 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 they said they didn't really end up doing that, though, in the end. They mostly no, they them. didn't. But that's what he designed it initially to be. Yeah. Uh, Will Morgan says, like, YGD projects. and Rodriguez are not bad directors. The issue is you cannot separate those directors from their styles. I, I, I feel like like Rodriguez has two styles and he picked the worst of the two. He picked the Spy Kids style over the action movie. Rodriguez, style. Rodriguez never oh. won an Oscar, dude. You know, yeah, like, they're not Fair the enough. same fucking person, man. You know, Matt Risman says crazy. the best part of the Famuyiwa announcement is that in his Mando three episodes, he will will be directing a new droid character that Kamal Nanjiani is playing. That's I a big Urkel announcement. Playing that character, it's the Urkel bot. No, no, no! You you are you you are wrong, again. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to tell That's you. That's normal. I'm sorry to tell you, but um. Man, it was down there. It was down there in the archives. I had to I had to dig to find it. I had to, <laughs> I had to dig. <laughs> way up there. Way, 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 way up there. Morgan. Up there. So. Yeah, let's make Nikki and Nikki mad today. How can we do it? Wait, no, Nikki. Nikki says Ragnarok is great. That's I think Ragnarok is great. How are we ever going to fight this out? Um, King Chris says Tostinos and microwave. Hey, hey Chris, if you want to bring the, the Tostinos, uh, Rob says you can, but I say you can. So just don't let Rob see, but show me and I'll be like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Be good. So uh Planet Fitness says the problem is that Thor Love and Thunder wasn't funny at all. Okay, so see, yeah, see that, 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 that that's subjective. Yeah, like like plenty of friends Bes, who love it. Bestman, I think I think I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I think Bestman told me it was funny, like that. He said the humor worked for him. I think he said the humor worked for him, but if it didn't work for you, he could see how the movie was would not please you or something like that. I think that's what he said. I don't know. We were playing well, video games. People also, you know, give it three or four years because, mm -hmm. I mean, when the Amazing Spider-Man movies came out, they got shat on to no end, rightfully so, in my opinion. Now people are like, that's my Spider-Man. That's the greatest Spider-Man ever. I'm like, what fucking... You emo Spider-Man? Remember when he was all emo and shit? Like, whatever, dude. He brought it that, back. And he... that, that was the only part of that movie I liked when he was dancing and emo and stuff. That's the third Spider-Man movie. Yeah, the third the one. Amazing Spider-Man movies when he was wearing the hoodie and he had the big emo hair and... At the mm. internet at the time was like they're making them all emo again. Oh, Peter wait, Parker's wait, wait. clean haircut. Wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hair. Rob, I, I don't know this shit. Is this the, the Andrew Garfield ones? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Amazing okay. Spider Man. Yeah. That right, that yeah. you want to talk about funny? It, see, it's called the Amazing Spider Man, but it wasn't amazing. So it, yeah. I, it's just Andrew Garfield Spider Man. Here's the studio system for you. It, like a good a good story. Two stories, quick. One, mm -hmm. you remember that movie that came out that was like the Trolls movie? It was a CGI movie based on the little dolls we grew, we had when we were kids. Mm -hmm. That started out as like a fucking Discworld movie. The script, mm. original script for that was Terry Pratchett's Discworld. By the time okay. it ends up in a movie theater, it's a Trolls movie. So okay. like that's how you start one way in the studio, turns it into that, right? Yeah. Amazing Spider-Man was supposed to be a low-budget 50 to 70 million dollar we're gonna go out on the streets actually swing a spider-man on a rope like the old tv show but we're gonna use modern techniques you know we want the the, the budget we're, we're, well. we're gonna shoot it well we're gonna shoot it shoot we're it well. gonna get a character director so they got J, uh, mark webb who did that well he did some character driven movie they got andrew garfield you know who's like a character driven dude and they were going to go out there and just do something like, and they actually, during the filming of it, they're like, look, we're out on New York. We actually got a crane. We're swinging. And I was like, this should be interesting to see what this looks like. Right. Right. By the time the first trailer comes out, the trailer is 100% CGI. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was his first person running of Spider-Man. They did. 
they threw Avi Arad and Sony was like, this isn't enough money. This is Spider-Man. They threw money and more money and more money at it during production to get their fucking, we're getting our tentpole fucking major film. They could not, they could never let themselves do it. Yeah. You know? So like, I always think about that. Like people, they probably did internals and were like, Hey, people love the comedy of Ragnarok. The last time we saw Dory is depressed for two fucking films. You know what I mean? Let's make a big comedy. People fucking you know, don't like, I always say it's careful when you go pure comedy because you run the risk of turning it into Batman and Robin, you know? Yeah, like, which is not run comedy. That risk. Yeah, uh, I, not I, comedy. that's, yeah, but that's probably, can, that's probably how Nikki Nikki feels about that new Thor. It's <laughs> possible. The end of it. I haven't seen it, but. Yeah, I haven't seen it either, so it. I can't comment. Yeah. Um, I, I think Sam met, has an interesting idea here that I, I think, oh no. All right, guys, we're gonna we're gonna have to end end the show. What happened? My uh, somehow my com- oh when that thing fell earlier, it was my computer plug, and um, I'm not going to be power? able to when I plug it back in. I'm not going to be able to rebound in terms of battery. It will die. I started getting slow down, so it will just eventually slow down, or the computer will die, whichever. But I think we did it all. But uh, this idea that Matt has. Is Star Wars, but um, maybe it's not supposed to be hot director Star Wars, but George Lucas is Star Wars. In other words, we don't need spins on the content, just the content. But at the end of the day, it's like when you have, you know, St. Vincent cover a Beatles song or Phoebe Bridgers cover a Beatles song. Does it sound like the Beatles or St. Vincent and Phoebe Bridgers or the Matt Metallica tribute record that came out last year? Was but that the Phoebe Mando Bridg- is you know? a comment on Star Wars. It's Favreau saying, and Favreau, before you go, Favreau was yeah. the same age as my buddy who passed away last summer, okay? Mm-hmm. And they grew up, that, that, their first experience with Boba Fett was that toy, the toy, the mail order toy. Yeah. And that toy, like, just filled up my buddy. He would tell me, it just filled up his head with fucking, just all the possibilities. It looked so cool to him. It was like a Spartan warrior with the fucking gun. Is he a Jedi? He's going to fight the, what's going to, all these ideas, it's over, like, three or four years in a kid's brain of thinking about what that could be right mm-hmm. let's say two or three years yeah and but empire comes out and he's like okay it's just getting started that looked amazing i can't wait to and then jedi comes out fucking mm-hmm. just angry to no end bro yeah to no end and so favreau's a guy who's like here's something i always wanted to see right so they made a version of it that allowed that to happen the version of it you always wanted to see and so so like like favreau i think brought 80s kids childhoods to screen with the mandalorian but i don't think he brought george lucas to star wars to screen with the mandalorian like i don't think i don't think the mandalorian choices are the ones that lucas would generally have made and so yeah yeah, it's but it's a it's an interesting idea right decisions you know no um radio land murders (laughs) <laughs> i was so excited for that film jason you have no idea like, but he I did really was. he did make red tails and that gave us that gave us terrence howard in a uh, big way in so a big it was way supposed to be directed by someone else but it yeah. didn't work out no, no but <laughs> T- terrence howard is just hilarious um he did, uh, he invented a whole new form of physics you know this? he has there's no zeros aren't real he's trying yeah. to sell stuff to people in uganda it's great it's fun yeah um yeah. So, anyways, we will uh, be back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time with power. Hoverboards don't work on water. You need power. Okay. Well, we'll be, thank you, everyone. Sweet. And um, Nikki, Nikki, I'll fight you tomorrow. I hope. I hope. I hope we can fight tomorrow. And uh, everyone, see thanks for boomers. for hanging out with us. Maybe there'll be some Star Wars news. Maybe there won't be. We'll see. And uh, like the video and all that jazz. And. Uh, Pizza Party Fridays, don't forget. It's the end of the show. Come on, let's go. Hey! It's the end of the show. Come on, let's go. Hey! It's the end of the show. Come on, let's go. Hey! It's the end of the show. Come on, let's go. Hey!